Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Corpse of Discovery, and it is by Off the Page Games and by Skybound Tabletop. It's a one to four player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to 75 minutes to play a scenario, and it's for ages 14 and up. And in the game, you are going to be taking part in the Lewis and Clark expeditions, searching out far and wide lands, and of course, fighting demons, because that's what they did. When you go out and explore the different scenarios or lands, you'll be trying to complete different objectives, whether it be trying to find hidden forts or plants or trying to defeat a certain type of enemy. And the way you do that is simple. You're going to take one of the random tiles on the board, remove it, and check to see what happens. That could give you a resource. It could give you a monster to deal with or a threat of some sort. And of course, you'll be unlocking either bosses or finding unique locations where you can build your own shelter for camp or fire to prevent yourself from having wanting to need unnecessary traps. And you're just gonna go ahead and pick them up, see what happens, and progress throughout the game. If you can complete the scenario before the scenario ends by you running out of water or food, then you will win. And you can progress through many different scenarios, and each one has their own unique set of maps that you can switch out, and they're interchangeable, so you can have a replay experience. That way you'll never remember each of the different maps itself. It's a great style of game. So pick your character up, grab your torch and your first aid kit, and head out onto the Lewis Clark expedition with Corpse of Discovery. Setting up the game is pretty simple. The first thing you'll do is you'll determine which of the scenarios that you are playing. I have four here, there might be more, and I was focusing mainly on the Vermeter one. Uh, but you're going to basically set the game up as the rulebook states. And there's a separate, separate section in the scenario book that gives you more setup. Take the main game board out and place it within reach of all players. Then you'll get a certain number of water based on whatever the scenario says, and you'll place it on the bottom right-hand corner. In my case, it's eight. Then you're going to take the challenge cards and you're going to shuffle them up with whatever scenario cards they are. Uh, and there's a little symbol on the top right hand side in the corner next to the sun that says whatever specific scenario you're playing. I have a meter in here and I'll, as well as you'll take the approach the arch scenario or challenge and place that as the first one on the far top left. Then after you shuffle the deck you'll place two random ones out and leave the deck next to the board here. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and take the main game board. Uh, based on whatever scenario you're playing, you'll take one of those little inserts uh, from the set here. So this is Insecta, and there's a bunch of different maps in here that are both front and back. You'll just take one of them and you will set it inside of this, ooh, of this board here. Once you've done that, you're going to, of course, make sure that uh, there's a white piece of paper over it so that you cannot see what is there. And you will place each of these little tiles here face down so that the sun side faces down. That means the entire board should be covered and nobody should know what is on this main game board. Take the specific scenario sheet. This is kind of like a separate scenario board that kind of tells you where everything is and the rules for the game and set it within reach on the opposite side of the main game board. And then of course, take the destiny deck. You'll shuffle all the destiny cards, including any of the cards for your specific scenario. Like I said, Vameter, so I've got them in here. And you're gonna place two out face up on top of the scenario board in the little indicated spaces. The scenario will give you a certain number of items. In my case here, I'm going to be starting with some huntsman guys. There's going to be some of these little, um, like I guess, little food for the monsters that you'll start with. There's fire tokens, uh, tokens that will block your bag, additional water, and anything else that you might need. Each player is going to get one character and two items. And if you're playing the easy mode, you can include a med kit or the med supplies along with you guys. After that, it's just a simple of selecting one of the different scenarios. So for mine, specifically, Vameter is going to come with the Vameter, which is a bad guy. It'll have a certain amount of HP and the character himself. It's also going to come with a bunch of Cyclops. And the threat cards for the deck are going to include the basic ones, which are going to be Chased, Injured, and then for the Vameter, it will be Hunting Grounds and three Cyclops. And then there's the movement pieces for the Vameter. Then, after that, you're basically ready to begin the game, Corpse of Discovery. Now, how do you play? It's even easier to explain that. So there's some base rules for the game, and the base rule for the game is on your turn, you're going to explore. You're gonna reveal one of these tiles here, you're gonna to check to see what it does, and then activate it. Sometimes it's gonna give you food, sometimes it'll give you water, other times it could give you wood or rock. Everything that is on the game board is described on the scenario sheet. It'll tell you not only what is there, but what is adjacent or next to it. Sometimes you might have water adjacent to wood, or berries might be across from teepees, or maybe you're going to have teepees have uh, at least one adjacency to a threat. 
in this case, my Cyclops, and so on and so forth. There's a ton of different rules, and each scenario plays a little differently based on the board, so you have an idea of what's on the board as you unlock things, but you start with almost no information. Um, and on your turn, that's all you do. You take one of these guys, reveal it, and gain the reward or suffer the, suffer the penalty. After you've done that, you're going to take that token, you'll place it on the farthest top left portion of these challenge cards. On the top right of the challenge card is a number. When that card reaches that number by having that many sun tokens on it, you will attempt to complete it. Um, and once you complete it, hopefully it'll be like, hey, if you have one wood, you gain a food. Otherwise, you'll suffer losing a food and losing a water. Uh, then there's a consequence. If you're playing anything other than the base mode, uh, you'll check to see if you're fatigued, meaning that your bag is full. And if you are, you'll lose a water. And then otherwise, if there are any monsters in the field, you'll suffer their challenge consequences. From there, the card will be discarded, and you're going to continue drawing these guys here up until the next card. And you'll go through that for all of these guys here. So I draw this, pick it up and place it here. I gain a food. Next turn, I can now choose any adjacent space to one that's already been revealed. And then I can pull that tile and place it down, and that will give me a mushroom. This is also a space that will let me place my shelter out as long as I can afford to do so. Then I can continue to pull again and place, and I gained a water, and I'll give myself water on the board. You can only ever have 10 water max. If you ever get any more than that, you have to discard. And bam, 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 oh, some other goodies that I'll get. I've got five here. I do have a food, so I will get rid of my food from my bag here. Whenever you gain resources, you'll place them in your bag on the bottom right-hand corner of the main game board. The backpack ha holds six, but if you ever have more than four, you can become fatigued unless you have a shelter. And that will, fatigue will basically check during certain portions of the game, mainly at the end of every single challenge card, it'll ask if you're fatigued. But if you have that tent on the board somewhere, like in this case, the mushroom location has that space where I can place a shelter, then I no longer get fatigued for having extra items. But that's how you're gonna pay for everything on these challenge cards. And in the middle of the challenge card, it tells you what you owe. And then on the bottom left is what you get if you succeed, and the bottom right is what you get if you fail. You can always choose to fail if you want, even if you have the resources required. And you'll push through all of these cards here. And once you've pushed through all the challenges, you'll go to the end of day phase. The end of day phase is where you feed yourself. If you don't have a food, you lose the game instantly. Always have a food at the end of every round of the three challenge cards. Um, the next thing is the night phase. During the night phase, you're going to see if there are any monsters in play, and if there's not, you're going to go ahead and reveal a threat card. The threat could be a monster, it could not be. Each of the threats have a different location they'll spawn at and different rules for how they move. Then you'll refresh all your characters and gear. Your characters and your gear have useful effects that you can use on your turn, which I'll talk about in a second. And finally, you'll reveal three new challenges. You'll take three challenges from the top of the deck, remove any of these little sun markers from the board that you got, and place new ones out. That will hopefully be less challenging, but probably not. And progress from there. And your objective is to complete the scenario before you get fatigued, uh, or sorry, you, you, you get dehydrated and run out of water. So when, there's no, when you have no water and you need water, you lose the game. Or if you ever don't have food at the end of a day phase, you lose the game as well. Talk about mine specifically for my scenario, which yours could be different, but mine is Vimeter, and my rule of thumb is I need to kill the Vimeter. And uh, this scenario is a unique style of scenario where guys have to shoot, I have to bring out these guys here and shoot the Vimeter after he moves, and if he's in line of sight, I can shoot him with my dudes, which I'll talk about like kind of all that stuff in my review as to how the game plays and what I think about it, but the idea is to kill the Vimeter utilizing what items that I have. It'll say where he spawns, um, and then there's a certain amount of rules in the game that it kind of gives you as far as where is everything. There's some extra rules for whenever you gather unique tokens from this specific scenario, etc., etc. Uh, your character, when you're playing into your turn, you pick up a tile, and you can turn and exhaust your character or your cards, but they do not come back until the end of the day phase. They're all variety of different useful items. It could be to remove the sphere to destroy a monster in play, or it could be something like, if you guess the correct tile before you pull it, you get a bonus, whether it be not having to place a sun token, giving you more extended time, or whether it be something like getting a bonus resource from an adjacent location. And there's a wide variety of items that you can choose from throughout the game. And that's pretty much the entirety of the game. There's some other rules as far as you can gain fire, and when you have two of them, you can go ahead and look at a space, 
spend the two fire and backtrack and not go there. So it's a way of protecting you from dealing with spaces you do not want to go to. Um, there's your fort, which we explained. You can spend the resources on the bottom left of your board to place it on a space as long as you've uncovered it that will allow you to gain more spots in your backpack. In my specific scenario, there are these little guys here. What are they called? I don't know exactly what they're called. It's a weird name, but they're little dudes that you can kind of feed to the, the Cyclops or like you can basically use them to to shoot the Cyclops and the Vermeter. They kind of give you your weapon, your hunters extra weapons. Uh, there are spaces in the game from when you uh, fail to succeed a challenge that will block your backpack from the left going to the right. That blocks you out and makes you have to remove resources in order to remove them. And then of course your basic resources, which are water and all the ones that are over here. And there's a big variety of them. Some you won't use and some you will. And that's basically the idea of the game. Complete this scenario, whatever that specific one is, uh, all within under the time limit, which is based on your dehydration or not having food at the end of the round. Okay, well, let's talk about the game now. Corpse of Discovery is a pretty simple, straightforward game. Being able to start in a location or column and pull out one of these little tokens here, revealing a resource or a unique threat or experience that you'll go through throughout the game, and then placing it on a challenge card. Gaining resources is your main goal to accomplish the challenges while trying to complete your scenario, whatever that might be. Now I'm focusing on the Vemeter one, so in my case, the bad things that will come out are things like hunting grounds, which will basically make you spend an extra water to pass every challenge, card and you cannot get rid of it until you've shot the meter or you're going to deal with things like cyclopses uh, these guys have their own unique effects and they move in a certain way everything is explained on each of the cards for the scenario so your monster may be different from mine um, but basically i'll place him depending on when i place him during the day or during the night where he will go um, a it could be a monster layer whenever you reveal a monster layer you're later going to draw a threat card in which case you'll take the cyclops of the correct um art and place it down on that location or it could be from the night in which case it'll tell you oh place it on the west westmost explored space and i go okay northeast southwest the most closest is is here and sometimes if there's a tie you can kind of select where that monster goes it also explains consequences whenever the end of a challenge card is revealed uh, the challenge, uh, the consequence is going to be A, check to see if you're overburdened, and also to see what each of your monsters might do. Sometimes they'll move, sometimes they'll attack, it really just depends on the monster. The also other cool thing about this uh, specific scenario is Vermeter. Basically, whenever you find one of the little dudes that you can kind of sacrifice to have your hunter shoot, um, the Vermeter is going to come out. You'll gain one of those tokens, the Vermeter will come out, and on this rule book here, or this board here, it says C2 is where it's going to happen. You'll check the board here. Actually, there are letters and numbers going from top to bottom. So I would go, okay, C and 2, and that's where he'll start. My guy is actually really cool, the bad guy in this, in this scenario. He doesn't actually walk on explored terrain, which are the ones that are revealed. He only walks on the unexplored terrain. And how he moves is he has these little tokens. And whenever you draw like a water tile here, he's going to reveal a token. He's going to flip it over and move that many spaces based on where he's pointing. And he'll just go one, two, three. He'll pass over any unexplored terrain. And whenever he bumps into something, he'll rotate 90 degrees. And he'll just keep going along the game board on all the unexplored terrain. And your objective is kind of interesting. Whenever you pull tiles, you'll be able to use like your action cards or any specific scenario bonuses. Like in my case, I could choose to like pull one of these guys, place this token over here, but then I can go ahead and place my hunter down in that revealed location. And my hunter has a number on him. Uh, there's, I have a four, three, and a two. And whatever that number is, is his range. So the next time the Vermeter moves, then the hunter is going to be able to shoot after he has moved. So let's say I moved here, I pulled a new marker and it's a water marker, in which case the Vermeter will flip, reveal a four, and he'll go one, two, three, and four. In which case, after movement takes place, you'll check the board and see if you have any hunters that are either, um, uh, that are like, up, down, left, or right of the sky, and then in range. And if so, you'll remove the hunter, place it on the um, pass area of the end of day or night phase. It really doesn't matter, but at the end of the round, you'll get them back, because you only have three of them, and you'll remove an HP from the Vemeter. And when the Vemeter runs out of HP, then you can trap him. And the way you trap a Vemeter is you remove all the spaces um, uh, from top, bottom, left, and right from the Vemeter so that he cannot move. And the way you do it is something like this, where you have basically everything is blocked, he's not able to move anymore, in which case that's how you can win. So you basically weaken him to the point uh, where he's, he's kind of, you know, he's, uh, he's weakened, <laughs> and then he can't go anywhere. He's just kind of stuck on the board, and then you can win the scenario. But this game plays out 
where it's pretty simple starting out. You're getting resources, maybe a few threats here or there. You have a way to deal with them, but, but resources start to dwindle. And the characters, the bad guys, are still coming. Uh, the, the meter is teleporting around the board, making it more challenging for you, and you have to start relying on getting the correct tiles. It's not just about having whatever you want and completing the challenges. Sometimes you have to fail the challenges because sometimes you will need food in order to survive or water to survive. Sometimes you'll have to remove resources to reduce your fatigue away. Um, or of course, if you have these little markers here that block your backpacks that you can't place on there, you have to spend resources to get rid of those as well. Oh, another cool thing too is as you remove columns and rows from this game, you're gonna be able to pick up either A, these destiny cards, which are really powerful and really useful, but you can only get them when you clear a row or column. And the, the other one is instead of taking the cards here, it'll let you, in this case, move your guys. So if you placed a dude down and you know where the V-meter is most likely gonna move next, you can move that character up to three spaces, preparing for when the V-meter moves. V-meters are also, this specific character has a unique um, function of moving from one to four spaces based on these tiles. And whenever you're down to the last one, you just shuffle them up. So you never get to actually guarantee you know where the guy's gonna move. And so it's it's a fun game. It's really, it's kind of light. Uh, it's light, but there's a lot, right? Like it's very simple. You just pull a tile and, and do what it says. Take an action if you have one. There's a bunch of actions playing your character card and exhausting him until the next round, exhausting your items, uh, playing a destiny card. You have to complete your pickup and reveal and etc. before you can do any of these things. So you have to do it before or after, but you can also build a shelter on any location. And of course you can build a fire, uh, which is going to allow you to backtrack where if you walk in a space you don't want to go to or could make you lose the game, you can spend your fire tokens thusly to kind of travel back in time and do what you need to do. I really like this game. It is a lot of fun. I love the idea too, where uh, the board for the scenario tells you what locations are likely to be adjacent or around other locations on the game board. Okay, I know that there is water and rock and they are next to each other, which means that there's gonna be a footprint adjacent to those guys there. Or maybe I have a footprint here, so I know there's gotta be water or rock. So I would be like, okay, well there's rock here, so one of these two spaces is definitely water. I reveal one, and then, okay, there's the water. And so you're never guaranteed, but you have an idea about where spaces are. And as the game progresses, you start to run out of spaces and you have to start thinking about it. It's a little bit like Minesweeper meets a tactic style game, which utilizes resources and bonuses and cards and whatnot. And I just freaking love it. It's a lot of fun. I love the idea of having different scenarios and the board is ever changing. The board actually has um, front and backs and there's a variety of them to play. And you have like a front and a back. So you're never gonna like remember what the board looks like, especially because if you play a scenario more than 10 times, you're, you're super getting your money's worth. Just playing each of the scenarios, I think is gonna be worth your money for this type of game. But if you're looking for this like sweet minesweeper style feeling game, um, resource management and tactics, then Corpse of Discovery is definitely where it's at. So artwork. Excellent, excellent artwork. Just like all of Off Page Off Pages games, uh, they're great. Uh, like they are, they go above and beyond for their artwork for these type of games, and it shows the quality, the style of gameplay. It's it's just all there, and it feels all tight together. You feel like you're moving around the game board and exploring. You feel like you're dealing with the Vameter as it moves around, and you're trying to position your hunters to shoot it as as soon as it jumps out of the bushes, right? And yeah, they just, they spare no expense when it comes to making sure that this game looks quality. Speaking of quality, this is a prototype here, and the prototype is banging. It's very, very good. It feels good to pull the pieces from the game board. It feels good to move the characters. A lot of this stuff is prototypes, so things will be changing. But just as it is here and knowing what they're going to make in the future, because I've seen enough and reviewed enough of their games from the past. Um, I think even the last one was uh, Harrow County. Uh, their prototype for that was amazing, and the game itself afterwards looked even better. So even better uh, than this is great. Uh, I've already seen regular board games that have less quality than this. So artwork is excellent, quality of the game is excellent, and gameplay is a lot of fun. A couple things to note, like when you're pulling these pieces, if, I kind of feel like I always want to move in a path, but you can actually pull wherever you want. 
Um, and that can change your, your style of play drastically as to where you want to pull and how you want to gather things. It's all about securing resources, choosing the best locations, and getting the most value for each of your pulls, because all you're doing is pulling tiles in this game. But there's a lot of complexity and depth in that, if you want there to be. The challenge cards are great. It feels like you're pushing instead of end of round, it feels like end of day where everything kind of settles down and then the monsters pop up at night and then you're once again back at it. And yeah, I just really, really dig it. What I also dig about their games in specific is how unique each of the mechanics feel. I've never played a game like this. I've never played where I'm pulling these pieces off the board to gather resources. The closest one I came to is an Asteroids game that is kind of like this, but it's not really a tactics game. It's more about just pulling, checking, gaining resources, and then spending them to get to get more resources, like set collection when it comes to these guys. This is all a story-driven, intertwined game that has quite a few different things you're doing in it. Uh, and it's just great. I, I love these type of games. They're so innovative and unique and different. It's gonna be some of those, their games I think are not for everybody, but for the people who really, really love these unique mechanics and style and quality, then this is definitely gonna be one for you to check out. I personally have, always like their games and this is no exception and in fact I think this is probably my favorite of all of them yeah I don't think I've ever said any of the other ones were my favorites so yeah I think I'm almost positive this is my favorite of all of the games from them just because of how light and simple it is to explain and set up and then how much in-depth and complexity you can start to gain as you play the game ah it, it's it's a wonderful experience if you're looking for a game like this definitely check it out Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Corpse of Discovery by Off The Page Games. If you're interested in taking a look, like I said, there's a link down below in the description where you can check out the campaign or pre-setup to check out the campaign. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, kicks, or listen more. Maybe we'll do a live stream of this game because I think it would do really well on a stream. And as always, we thoroughly appreciate you. If you want to subscribe and hit that bell notification button, please do so. But otherwise, we look forward to venturing off with you and Lewis and Clark next time. Minus the demons. <laughs>